Amen. So that's pretty exciting, isn't it? And um, all of us have a part to play in this. You might not see yourself as a media person or a media producer, but guess what? If you've got one of these in your hand, you can be very easily. And so that's what is important, that we have on-demand access to content anytime, anywhere, on any digital device. So when you are next to a person at a bus station or in, in the fields or in the coffee shops, you can say, hey, here's a two-minute video. Here's a short video that I can share the gospel with, and I can bring people to Christ through short things. But then we also want to engage with them and have interactive user feedback so that it's not just pushing the media, but there's a push and pull and engagement with our audience. Actually, our folks here at Create uh, in Thailand are working together with another ministry on films where you can actually interact with the film and you can change the outcome of certain scenes. So that's, that's like high engagement interactivity. And um, during our last time in South Africa, we went around and asked the different regional leaders, what can we as a contextual resource group help you with? And they mentioned t for t training. So we did a pilot project with the oral DTS in Indonesia, and you can see they're using um, these cards and they said it was effective to use these cards in sharing the t for t principles. And then also you can put it on your mobile device. And so you don't have to uh, worry that, oh, I didn't bring my cards. I can always have it on my phone and you can use it to easily go through the different principles. So we did it in Indonesian and Hindi and different languages for Bamari's group in South Asia. So this is just the start. It was a pilot project, but I think that more and more we're going to use different graphics and visuals to help us in our communication of the T for T principles. And the exciting thing about media is that today it is reproducible. So as church planters, we're always concerned about this. You know, is what we're using reproducible? And years ago, yes, media couldn't really be reproduced by the average person. But today, people are doing it. They're already doing it. And uh, a, an image like this, that you could have all these different cards that you can flip through as we did here, you can Bluetooth that to your friend, someone you're sharing about Jesus for the first time, they've never heard of Jesus, and you can Bluetooth the whole thing and say, okay, we're going to talk about these next five cards next time I meet with you. So just think of how, how exciting this can be using new media and using the mobile devices that we have. And there's so many ways, social media, line, so many different forms that we can share. So we're just going to share one little um, ministry that could take you a week to understand fully, but some of our friends there uh, can share with you more. So it's called Media to Disciple Making Movements. And so this is just the pathway that they share how first you just need to set your vision and your goal. You train people in DMM. You pray a lot, and then you look at the different strategies and paths. You figure out who's the audience you're trying to reach, your persona. Then you come alongside and ask marketers to help you develop targeted ads and content. Then you evaluate, did it meet my audience? And then eventually you'll see that this really sparked an interest through this uh, social media to um, share a, a funnel that they also have in their ministry of um, how you have a wide group of, of people that you're uh, doing media that would entice them to want to come to your site. So it's Facebook, Google ads. And then you also look at the different aspects of, of media that um, you can share with them that is in their language and their adapted to their people group. And then as people are interested, then you have online correspondence and you have local believers interacting with the people that online are saying, hey, I'm, I'm interested to know more. And so then, then you have a tracking device where you have the seekers organized and you check and recall previous conversations and check out their spiritual progress. And then you have dispatching and following up and that you have disciple makers follow up with them. So you can see by this funnel, everyone's needed. We need the media people to do really great ads and 
and uh, Facebook and things that would draw people in. But then we need the guys on the ground who would follow people up. And then we're going to see a whole coalition, more and more contacts coming through it that you can then follow up. And, and then eventually you want to meet face to face. And then the church is formed. And then there's multiplication. So it's exciting. Uh, and, the, and there's some examples that we're going to show that how this is working. But you can see there's different roles that are needed. You have the visionary leader that keeps the uh, team's vision clear. And then the, those that develop the content, the responder, the multiplier, and the dispatcher. And so all of these are needed. So we want to do some pilot projects. We're talking to some people in Indonesia and Thies is there that he's going to share more with you about this. But this is something we want to just propose to you. And some of you might already be involved in this, we know some people when we were in the Middle East said, oh, I'm a dispatcher. So you're aware of this, but as DMM people, we should be aware of that this media to DMM is a, is a ministry that we should know more about. So you can look at kingdom.training for more information about this ministry. The exciting thing too about this, this strategy is that it has at, as its goal, DMM, disciple making movements. So it's starting with social media, bringing in traditional media and all these elements, but focus specifically on the field. The strategy is actually a field driven and field created strategy by field workers who happen to have worked in a previous uh, occupation with uh, Facebook and Google. So they had the skills already and began to get revelation from the Lord, how they could put this together and combine it with their love and their passion for DMF. So we want to show you just a, a little bit of a, a, a case study, just to sort of whet your appetite on what could be possible. Uh, I'm not allowed to, to say the exact country, but this was a, done in a country in North Africa. Some friends of ours, uh, and actually TWR Motion, uh, helped and partnered with them a lot to help develop an animation piece. So they made a creation to Christ simple uh, motion graphics, we call it animation piece, designed for the, the people group uh, that they were reaching out to, 20 episodes, so they would release an episode every week or so, and then open it up for discussion and chat on Facebook, and then they would um, follow up people and have people uh, asking further questions of them. So basically, they started with a familiar-looking, um, uh, you know, visuals and things like that, animals, all this. Culture was familiar. They made sure they were following cultural norms. And these were the results that came uh, of that campaign. Just after 10 weeks of this campaign, they had over 70,000 Facebook responses, so responses to their Facebook ads. 686 or so uh, Facebook inquiries, people would ask them more, write them and ask them for more information. 556 agreed that they would meet face to face to talk more about the gospel on the field, right? In coffee shops and things. 350 of them actually did meet face to face with the team that was there, a team members that was there. 118 came to Christ. This is after just a three month campaign, okay? 118 came to Christ, uh, 48 got baptized not long afterwards, and they started seven new house churches from this. This was so incredible, after three months, it was, I can tell you, the news of this spread through all the ministries working in the Middle East. They wanted to know because many of them had been working 20 years, 40 years in the region, even doing media, pushing media out, but they never knew whether or not they were having an effect because they didn't have a, a direct contact with the field and the people on the field. This is the genius about this particular method. This is another example of the method being used. Okay, some friends of ours did uh, put together an animation. Carol was talking about, just, you know, find, discover your persona. They discovered four personas, 
four types of people that they wanted to reach out, that their, their research showed them. These were people that were questioning, but from different perspectives. So they created an animation of four friends, four buddies, right? Uh, and they each were one of those personas, and they interacted in this animation. It's an eight-part uh, animation. And this is it in Arabic. And uh, we'll just play a little bit of it, just for a, a bit. طيب يا شباب هلا رح نقرا كلمة الله مع بعض من وين رح نبلش استاذ؟ شو رأيكم بمراجعة سريعة للأحرف الأبجدية مشان حمودة؟ ولا يهمك حمودة، هالقصة رح تكون أقصر وممتعة أكثر من يلي بتحطهم على سناب شات يا أخي أنا مو فاهم هالسناب شات، كله صور لحمودة لحاله وعليها نفس الكتابة لكل بنت مو ناقصني غيري يعني ما حدا رح تفرق معه هدول الصور طيب خلينا هلا نترك كلمات حمودة العميقة ونشوف الكلمات اللي عن جد عميقة شباب نزلتوا تطبيق الانجيل على موبايلاتكم؟ ايه ايه نزلناه واصدار الشريف مثل ما حكي. طيب وبما انه شفنا البدايه المثاليه اللي خلقها الله. Okay, so they then go on to share about the, the creation to Christ uh, story with one another. You can see they were bluetoothing uh, the, the Bible to each other. This was later on in the process of them getting to know uh, Christ together uh, as friends. So this was done and put out as a campaign. They also used what we call chat bots, which are actually, if you know anything about chat bots, you're using them possibly every day. When you call up Amazon or someplace to check on your order, probably you're getting a, a bot, a robot message instead of an actual real person. Uh, so these are so, now with AI, they're so highly advanced we can actually use these to share the gospel and get pe take people through a process, whether or not they're really interested or they're just playing around or, or looking for a girlfriend or whatever, a boyfriend, uh, or if they're really serious about Jesus. So they used this um, animation that they had produced along with the chat bots. They reached 80, over 87,000 people on their Facebook ads, over 1,000 inquired uh, more about uh, Jesus, uh, 124 met face to face, 12 of those became believers. Now these don't sound like big numbers maybe to you, uh, but for ministry in the Middle East, these are numbers that people don't get in a year. In fact, sometimes it's 10 years to see these, this number of people come to Christ. And they got them actually doing uh, DBS in groups. So, and this is how much it cost, only a little over a couple hundred dollars they paid for this campaign. So it's incredible, and they're following up because they got subscribers and they're doing continued um, uh, campaigns after this.